drummer for Soul Asylum, Prince of the New Power Generation, and so many other great artists. And yeah, I also I did a run with Shaka Khan. Don't forget that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Shaka Khan. You know, I never saw you on tour with Shaka Khan, but it, you you were with her for a couple of years, right? I, I uh, yes. Um, I would. I think it, it might have been more like a year and a half or so. Um, okay. And <laughs> when I left. It was because I, I I I got an offer to go on tour with Maxwell. That's right, yeah. And um, and Were you before or after Rocky Bryant? Uh, I'm not sure. Rocky playing with playing with Chaka? No, for Maxwell. Oh, I um, I think I was before Rocky. Okay, I I was on the uh, the Embria tour. It was like two thousand, oh, okay. and um, fortunate was a huge hit. We did 40 right. sold out shows. Nine of them were at uh, Constitution Hall, Constitution Hall in uh, DC. A nine night run. Wow. And just women throwing panties and flowers all night. They love this dude. You know, and he was so gracious and such a nice guy. And uh, right. you know, we got to know each other a little bit. Actually, um, while we were in rehearsal for that tour, we were out in LA at um uh what's the name of the place? Center Staging. And um, one night, him and his woman uh, were going to see uh, the Blair Witch Project. Oh, yeah. right. And uh, he was like, hey, money, you want to come see Blair Witch with us? I said, yeah, man, I'll go. So <laughs> they right. found some theater in, you know, in, in L.A. and uh, got our seats kind of blocked off. It was just me, Alan Leeds, Maxwell, and and his, his lady friend. And... Right. Um, and we waited for the lights to kind of go to half, and uh, we kind of went through like the the, the side exit, came in the exit, and right. got our seats. You know, and I ended up sitting right next to Maxwell. I think Alan was on the other side of me, and his woman was on the other side. So we were sitting together, and right. so you know, <laughs> like a couple of sissies, a couple of things happened at a movie. Ah, we both kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Got, got freaked out at the same time. Holding on to each other. Yeah, we looked at each other and started cracking up. You know, he, oh. he was all right with me, man. Uh, Maxwell was really, really kind. I, I really love that dude. He, he was uh, so gracious. And, and, why why and, do you think, um, you know, Maxwell and D'Angelo are so sparse in putting releases and then on the other extreme, Prince, he could have put out an album a week. Where do you think is the difference for someone? Uh, They're all great well, artists, but. Uh, here's the thing you have to remember about Prince, and I've been saying this a lot lately. You're talking about somebody who, uh, you know, at several times in their career, went in the studio by themselves and walked out with a hit. Well, yeah, right. You know, uh, everybody can't do that. Prince could engineer for himself. Prince could mic instruments by himself. He knew what he was doing. He uh, All those years he spent uh working at chris moon's studio he could commandeer a session i many times it was just me and him in studio a and he was he was rocking uh the ssl all by himself wow. you know it's what you that's what people don't understand is that you're talking about somebody who had complete artistic control like he could do it all he didn't need nobody right. except god and and ambition right. really you know, so yeah. it's I don't know if Maxwell plays any instruments at all. You know, uh, I th I think that um, what's the word? You know what it is? It's um, I was talking to Paul Peterson about this. We did a, a podcast for oh yeah, I Music watched that. Run. Great. that that's yeah. a must watch. And in that, music. I'm explaining. Right. He said, "What do you think Prince had over everybody?" I said, "He was confident." He never second guessed himself. He was certain. He he approached music with a certitude that a lot of artists don't have the bravery to do. Right. He trusted himself. And Paul Paul mentioned he's like, yeah, you're right about that because I saw him single handedly make decisions. You know, from you know Paul was you know in the time playing keyboards. You know, not even out of high school, and <laughs> you know, and so he got to see the rocket ship kind of take off. You know, like Purple Rain and all that, the phenomenon, you know, and it, it, it was one man saying, this is what I want. This is what I need. And Prince didn't need nobody to tell him. He knew what he was after. 
you know? Yeah, I, I first uh, became aware of Paul when uh, it was the Purple Rain tour, and we slept out actually at Nassau Coliseum for tickets. We wound up <laughs> all, we were there pushing with the crowd for like five hours before they opened the windows. And then our tickets were behind the stage. So one of the shows, Prince, you know when people leave the theater and think it's over and you guys come out and do one more with the house lights up? Oh, yeah. So he came out at St. Paul with his, uh, I think it was the yellow suit he was wearing. Okay. For some reason, he was out for the encore and, and jamming with Prince and the Revolution. So that's when I first became aware of Paul. Okay. Yeah, yeah I told I, I told Paul in that, in that, in that podcast. I, said, you know, I heard from Prince's mouth himself. It's like, Paul Peterson was the baddest white boy I ever worked with. That's right, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think he's stunned like, He said that? <laughs> yeah, and he was sneaking in Paisley Park. <laughs> yeah, well, that was later on. It's like, you right, know, and right. I got it. It's like, if you got a history with Prince, you know, you don't know what kind of reception you're going to get. Right, yeah. You know? And I actually, I was uh, working for, for Jam and Lewis for a little while after all that. And, oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Still kind of hot. I mean, I played on a couple things uh, on a Sounds of Blackness record. And also, they had an artist named, um, oh, wow. I'm trying to remember her name now. Angel Grant was her name. Okay. And uh, she had a kind of a hit single. It was a song called Little Red Boat. Okay. And, um, and we were in rehearsal. And Terry and Jimmy and uh, Big Jim Wright was, were, were all in the band. You know, and uh, Terry asked me like right before we got started. He said, "Hey, uh, have you been out out to visit Prince?" And I said, "No." I said, well, "Why would I do that?" He, he said, "Somebody like you." He said, "I'm sure he misses you. I'm sure I would miss you. What you what you're able to do, who you are. I I would miss you after spending all that time. You should you should go see him." You know, and at the time I was still kind of disgruntled about getting fired, and you know, you know, it was it was a small yeah, right. dumpster fire for us because right, right. when you get fired from that camp, nobody knows how it come. You yeah, know, right. and a lot of people were like, "Well, I guess maybe they couldn't hang." No, 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 that wasn't part of the problem at all. <laughs> you know, right. and I guess you know history will prove that in my case because I made several returns, you know, to the recording studio, you know, with him after. Sonny and I both, you know, and a lot of people did not, you know. So was there stuff that's, well, was taken out of the original vault that you guys recorded, but that, that you would look forward to seeing one day release that you were on? Oh, wow, man. You know, one night uh, Prince was just in kind of a kind of an old school mood and uh, he had Maceo and uh, Greg Boyer and that trumpet player named Ray, who was uh, related to the Booyah tribe, the dude with the braids. Oh, okay. They were in town. They were doing something. And Prince had him out of pace, and he called me and Sonny out. And we did a – Prince played piano, and they, like, arranged horns, like, on the spot. Like, we were just coming up with stuff. And uh, a lot of it sounded like, like, like uh, you know, like early – some of it sounded like early Little Richard records and whatnot. And uh, it was just raw and spontaneous and, and – I I think it, some of the some of the baddest stuff we ever did, you know, um, and uh, I would really be curious to see if he if he did anything with any of it. I mean, we probably cut like, you know, nine or ten things that night, you know. And he was and always he, rolling tape, right? Always roll. I mean, that's how he got thirty one twenty one away from us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Me and yeah, Sonny I were love just, that song. Yeah, we man, we were just grooving to get. Uh, get tones for the engineer, you know, and we just fell into this thing and we were in there, you know, just kind of laughing and, you know, carrying on. And I saw Prince walking to the airlock of Studio A and he was walking and then he stopped and he was looking and then he looked in the, in the, in the uh, control room and he was like, turn, turn my, turn my equipment on, you know, like, <laughs> like get yeah, some right. tape ready. And he came high stepping off, you know, and grabbed the strat, the uh, the the powder blue strat that he he had named Sonny because um, he said Sonny used to have a, a strat just like it, so oh, it was kind of an homage yeah. to Sonny. Right. And uh, he grabbed uh, the guitar, was like, "What what key we in? What's this? What's this? What are we working on?" You know, and me and Sonny just looked at each other like, "Okay, here's it." We just gave him another one, you know. Yeah, you gave him the title track. 
Yeah, I, we didn't know. I mean, it, we knew he was going to make something out of it because he was too excited, you know. And uh, when you were when you were recording with him, was it primarily just instrumentals, or was he doing vocals at the same time? It depended. Um, like uh, when we cut guitar for Planet Earth, uh, right. he had the words together. He was reading out of a notebook and kind of, you know, and giving us cues at the same time. And it just kind of, I mean, he, we had done that sort of thing with him so often. Uh, that's why he liked to call us because we had a sort of a shorthand way of, of getting things done. Like if he yeah. needed to, to make real headway, you know, um, he would call us and we'd just marathon it. We'd, we'd eat, I don't know if there was a session ever that we cut less than five different ideas, you know. So, uh, and, and also, I, I would love to see the tour footage come out. I know that you can't saturate the market with it, but I'm sure there's some amazing shows. I mean, oh man, yeah, I mean, there's, there's some of that. I'm, I, yeah, some of that I'm dying to see. Um, right. there were uh, a lot of gigs on the Gold Experience tour that were, uh, I, I, I guess the only word really for it is just victorious. I mean, you consider the the headspace that he was in, right. you know, and the fact that he never intended to release this record ever. <laughs> That's right. It was like the only way you could hear the music was to come to the show. And, uh, you know, but luckily in Europe, you know, he had a lot of, uh, you know, the, the fans followed him everywhere, like the Grateful Dead, you know. Mm -hmm. So they got used to the music or, you know, maybe somebody was bootlegging. I don't know. But it, you know, it all kind of caught up and, um, and uh, so there were a couple of shows where I'm sure it was like, uh, in the absence of his actual freedom from his contract, he put it into the performance. Like we could all feel it. Like that's he was just, he was just bursting at the seams, and that type of energy is infectious, you know. Uh, was, uh, well, he he did the uh, Letterman show, right? And Letterman yeah, that was uh, yeah. That yes, we did. We did do Letterman. I can't yeah. remember. I, think I don't think dolphin. the record was out yet. It was still out. It was still not. Yeah, you did released. Dolphin. We did Dolphin, and yeah. David Letterman, you know, how he likes to come up and shake everybody's hand after they perform. He, oh, yeah. He leans over the drum set. He says, is he going to be all right? <laughs> yeah, oh, he thought it was real. <laughs> no, I think he just thought, like, oh, what? just yeah, played He's it a out. crazy yeah. person. What's, yeah. It was like, right, you know, right. What, yeah, that what was something. That? Did you guys know something like that was going to happen? Uh not really right but you know again what we do is we d do our jobs we don't that's right you know, what would it look like for us to start gawking and going what hey what's <laughs> yeah know? especially when you know he had the, the cutout on the pit and damon had the had his head down there right just the show must go on right it's yeah it's yeah that's just you just have to keep moving right, you know right. it it happens sometimes with soul asylum like dave perner be just because he had a hit with Runaway Train don't mean he his punk roots are gone. You know, let the show start to, you know, start to to go south. That, that his inner Ramon will come alive like nobody's business. I, I mean, I've seen him just, you know, just go straight, you know, just guitar into amplifier. Just, right. you know, just... It, it happens. Sometimes it happens. And he's not proud about it, but I'm like, well, that's just part of the gig. It's just part of the aesthetic, you know? So the next the next record's going to be like 20 minutes long with 10 songs on, like the Ramones? <laughs> <laughs> Two-minute songs? <laughs> no, I just mean, no. I'm I just like, he has no, I know, I know. I just, yeah. It just, yeah, it's, 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 that rage is still in him, which is why he's, you know, still doing what he's doing. If you yeah. quiet the rage, what is your raison d'etre? Right, right. What is your reason to be, Joe Kelly? You have yeah. to have the rage. And, you know, in all honesty, the last, I feel funny about talking about this, but I'm going to say it. Because the last session I did with Prince, mm -hmm. uh, as I was leaving, he walked up to give me a copy of Hit and Run Volume 2. He's like, you're on this, by the way. Like, I, you know... I recycled one of your one of your drum tracks uh, on here, and I guess it was for Groovy Potential. Okay. And uh, but I was looking at his face, and something didn't look right. Like right. I don't want to say I saw something coming, but I, it just 
I was looking in the face of a person who was changing. Yeah. And I really couldn't figure that out at the time. But I, I, it's like, it was a different look that he used to have when he was just working himself to death. It was right, just right. something. And he was a little indecisive about what he wanted during the session. And that almost never really happened. You know, like, I really feel like, I, I mean, a, a friend told me somewhat in confidence that, um, uh, Apparently, he had had a conversation with uh, with his sister, with Taika, at some point. This is what I heard, mm -hmm. you know, where he was basically saying, like, I really think my work here is done. Like, I don't think there's anything left for me to do here, you know? Right, right. Yep. Like, I mean, he was a, 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 a super aware person to, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to understand his own mortality, you know? Yeah. Like, I, he was really in tune with something, you know, and uh, I, I could just I could just imagine the night that he, you know, passed away, a day away from going to rehab, the, the torment going through his head. I mean, it just. Yeah, I mean, I really think that um, uh, it, it's it, it's the way he died is just about the saddest thing I ever heard. Yeah. Um, this is a person who lived his whole life, you know, more or less on his own terms. And that means you live a lot of it alone, you right, know, right. like this is a person who I I'm quite certain that it was like his biggest fear realized, you know? Yeah. Like this but is, I, th I think, I think the fans and every everybody would have been welcoming to him to even if he had this problem, but yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know the details of the problem and or the issues. Yeah. I know that, you know, he was, he had a pretty good limp going, so I knew right, that right. he was, he was suffering. Right, right. But um, uh, yeah, I don't really that part of it. I, what, what, what happened or how it happened? I. Yeah. I'm not only he knows. <laughs> yeah, I'm not clear on that. But what I am right, clear right. on is that who wants to die alone? Right, right. I mean, you know, it, it's uh, it's just heartbreaking, man. You know, and I don't mean to to go all the way back there, but he's just been on my mind quite a bit lately. Yeah, I mean, hey, you're an integral part of his life, working. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you. As friends too, so yeah. I mean, as as friends as we could be. I mean, without right. you know, <laughs> you know, it's like I mean, but you know, for me, you know, in many ways, I had a reverential fear of him, like I did my own father. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, it was it was like it was hard to to even though we were peers, it was hard for me to characterize it that way in my brain mm -hmm. because he 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 gave so much. He he poured. Uh, a, a lot of information and care in into my upbringing musically, you know. He taught me a lot, and uh, so it's that sort of thing where it's like when somebody sows into your life that way, when they take the time, when they, you know, because I was nineteen, he doesn't, he couldn't possibly know what kind of trouble I could I could have caused later on. And luckily, you know, I was a good boy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any any particulars. I didn't, you know, I, I there was nothing I was really chasing, except a right. rack of ribs from time to time. But <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so you know, he met me at the time that he met me. He was meeting somebody who was pure pure of heart, and right. and and motivated, and and ambitious. I wanted to be the best uh, I could be, and whatever he saw confirmed that, you know. And he decided I was worth it. And he didn't have to. There, there could have been easily, uh, you know, a, a dozen, two dozen drummers in Minneapolis, who, you know, were 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 uh, uh, shedding harder than I was. You know. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you weren't that kind of person and and, and musician, you'd yeah. be gone in a heartbeat, right? After exactly. That. And that's what I'm, that was also the thing I was saying. It's like it wasn't just my ability to 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 play good time. You got to understand what's happening. You got to be able to, uh, you know, 
memorize things. You got to be to change everything at, at at the you know turn at the drop of a dime because that's the kind of person he was. He just followed his muse. He just did whatever felt good. You know, he was put on this planet to enjoy. You know, right, right. I think he was just like that. Like I mean, you know, we know from his catalog that. You know, he explored all the nooks and crannies, the bright places, the dark places. And a lot of those dark places, I don't have the, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking to, for? Uh, the, uh, I just didn't have it. I don't have the courage to go into those places, you know. And not too many people do. No. And he was, yeah. but he wanted, he was fascinated. He wanted, he wanted to, to see an experience at all. You know, and I'm I just, uh, uh, intestinal fortitude was I, what I was going to say. I didn't have the intestinal fortitude to explore those dark places, so we couldn't have been, you know, super tight anyway. You know what I mean? Because he had a penchant for, you know, exploration that I didn't share. Mm -hmm. All I knew was to trust God, and that right. if things get, ever got too heavy, I could I could leave. You know. Right. Like if it ever got to be so unpleasant, because it wasn't easy, Joe. You know, it's a he's every real artist is temperamental and demanding, and right. you know, they can you know maybe not super friendly all the time. So you have the uh, the scar marks on your tongue from not saying anything back sometimes, right? Well, you know, it's just uh, it's funny because uh, you know when it's somebody older than you and. You feel the pressure of having your your job sort of you know dangling in front of your eyes <laughs> twenty four yeah, hours right. a day. You know it's like you couldn't. We didn't. You know I couldn't call in sick. I, I had right. to show up, Joe. I don't know what would have happened if I had gotten too sick. To you know it's like a you know uh, I don't know what other job where is there where you can't you can't call in. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of pressure on you. Secret Service, you know. Yeah. I mean. It, it, so it's yeah, it's like it, it, people don't really understand how it, it, that that working with him, you had to you had to have a life to give him because it was going to take your life, you know. Like you go, you gonna be there. If you want, you say you want to play music all day, get ready, because <laughs> <laughs> you found you know? your spot. Yeah, so it you know it takes a certain temperament not to lose. I remember, it. Uh, yeah, I remember talking to John Blackwell, having him on the first time, and, and we talked before the interview, like the day before, and he's like, oh, "I don't know if we can play any Prince music and put it in the interview because I, I I don't want to lose this job." You know, he was like so reverential, like, mm -hmm. "I'm here, let's keep this job straight." You know. Yeah, and it's 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 weird because you know I. The first time I met John, I was doing a gig in Indianapolis with Shaka Khan, and it was a triple bill. It was Ann Nesby, so I knew all her cats because they were all right. from Minneapolis. Right. Uh, Ann Nesby, and then Cameo, and John was playing with Cameo, right. yeah. and then Shaka. And so I watched John's whole set, you know, and, and man, Larry was, uh, Larry Blackman was just all over it. I mean, he was just, I mean, it looked like he was just cussing him out the whole gig. Wow. <laughs> I think, you know, that's, I would have thought that once he got to work with Prince, that it would have been a piece of cake. Because Prince wasn't really like that. Prince right, was more right. like, can you or can't you? You know? Right. And uh, uh, so, I, you know, I, 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 I don't understand how uh, John could still be so touchy about it. But who knows what he went through? Who knows his temperament? You know, I mean, and God knows he had enough darkness in his life. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, how yeah, much, with his daughter. How much yeah. are you supposed to take as a human, you know? Yeah. So I talked to him. I talked to John. He called me New Year's Day after he had his second setback. I mean, he had a bad operation. So he called me on, on New Year's Day, and he said he wanted some advice for his wife. She wanted to do voiceovers in, in the studio, and we were talking a little bit. But mm -hmm. I said, how are you doing, John? He says, I'm just learning to try to walk. So, wow. So I guess I guess yeah. it went downhill. You know, a few months later, he passed away in the summer. I think in July that year. Sure. I, I just yeah. I. Wow. I don't know. Sometimes you ask. It's like yeah. why? Why do these things happen? Yeah. Right. You know. Right. It's that's one of the answers. I'm. I'm. I'm hoping 
that God will give me <laughs> one day, you know, <laughs> when I have to, you know, cross over. It's like, why, why do you take, why, why must good people suffer? Mm, yeah. True. You know, but, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, but, you know, we're looking at this from our, you know, our, our pea brain perspective. We're just, we're just humans. We can't even, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we can't, we can't even manage to, you know, to take care of ourselves. You know, we can't manage to do right by, by ourselves. It's like, I don't, I have no right to ask God anything. We haven't been good stewards, you know? That's true. Yeah. yeah we still, you know, mess each other over and, you know, and uh, and allow others to abuse others, so you know, got a lot lot more to discover and work on, right? Absolutely, Joe. I don't mean I don't know how long you got to talk, man. No, no, no. I I, I was I was gonna uh, <laughs> say goodbye, and uh, we because we got a lot of more music that you've uh, performed on and, and recorded over the year to slip in here. But um, yeah, so look, one one last thing: your wife and, and your kid. Um, your daughter, right? I have two stepdaughters. Yeah, two stepdaughters. Yeah. Uh, how is it? Uh, everybody staying cool, not on each other's nerves. With with, with dad oh, staying home that long. Well, uh, you know, I I don't really uh, because they're both a little more active. Uh, you know, like they got they go to work, they do this, they do that. It's like I don't really even go upstairs, Joe. As, oh, okay. as like I kind of stay where I'm at. I'm very from the years of being a musician, it's like you don't want to get sick, you know. Oh, I got you. You know, and and uh and I don't want to get sick, and yeah. none of us have been vaccinated yet, you know. I mean, aside from the myriad of <laughs> issues that come with just being in a house that is overwrought with uh um uh What's the word I'm looking for? Not testosterone. The opposite. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got me too. Uh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. So it's just, w- women, uh, women, uh, women jeans, lady jeans. Yeah. Uh, what is it called? <laughs> I can't. Why can't we remember what? If this will be the best part of the inter. This will be the best part of the interview. I was figuring out. I'm brain dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll I was, remember as soon as we hang up. It'll click. Yeah, I'll text you. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so in general, you know, uh, nothing. I don't expect anything in this house to go my way, and it's just better if I just kind of keep to myself most often. You know, right, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's too many, too too many. You know, to, there's a lot of potential beef, Joe. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you know, I'm, uh, I, you know, as over the years, it's just like I, I ain't their real dad. I, you know, I'm. I, it's like the list could go on and on about the different, right. you know, conflicts or a sense of conflict that I felt in this house. But I love everybody, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's just, you know, being we've a family's all, hard. We've all been through that, yeah. yeah. I got, well, I'm living with two ladies and, and my dog. My dog's a female, too, so I'm almost oh, wow. the same well, you really, as you. Yeah, we, got a, we have a cat that's, that's oh, okay. a female, but they named her Arnie or Arnold. Oh, <laughs> It's since become Miss Pants. So oh, guess, okay, Miss yeah, uh, you know, so uh, yeah, it's oh, it's the most talkative cat I've ever experienced in my life, and wow. like she just just talking all the time. I don't know what she's saying, but she means it. So yeah, God bless the life this of man. a musician on his break, but you know, yeah, I, you know, I just up and coming back out with uh, Soul Asylum, man. Yeah, That's man. Great. I mean, it's it, you know, I'm sure. I'm sure they can't wait until I'm <laughs> on the road and out. You know, if they, if people are not used to you being around, you know, when you come right, around right. and you stay longer than you used to, you know, that that can cause tension. You know, but uh. Oh, know. one one last thing before we close out the interview, I want to tell you, I was looking through like your discography of all the things you played on, and you know, music on the run podcast with Saint Paul Peterson. You guys were talking about the George Benson sessions. Oh, the. Boy. Uh, the song you played on True Love was co-written by a good friend of mine, Adam Falcon. Okay. With Trevor uh, Gale. I didn't even know I, I didn't know that story. I guess he he's he's really good friends with George Benson, so that's probably how this song got on there. That's great. Needless to say, we were, you know, uh we were floored every day. I mean, he George was just a, a class act all the way, man. 
He treated us like pure gold. And uh, yeah, the, I, I think I, I told the story on the podcast about Prince walked in to Studio B into the control room to get his, he had a George Benson model, a 335 Gibson. And he wanted to get an autograph by George. So Prince stepped into the, into the control room for a minute. And while George was signing it, he looked out, you know, into the performance area and saw me behind the drums and ice grilled me like he was upset. <laughs> like, oh, what, oh, you get to play with George? But I think that was more of that than like a sort of like right. a, like a thing where it was like, you know, I mean, the session was at Paisley Park. So, I mean, it's like he, he was yeah. making his money. He didn't have anything right. to complain about. I think That's as a true. player, he was like kind of jealous that I was in on something that he, he couldn't. You know, and yeah, that was uh, right. that was one of the the things about having to be Prince that I'm sure was uh that was uh, probably harder on him than anybody could imagine. He couldn't enter any situation as you know as just another musician, right. like you know what I mean. Like he couldn't yeah. nobody called him to play on anything. Nobody you know asked him to you know, and he was uh, he was in every way he was a real musician. Like he liked to jam, he liked to share ideas, he liked to be a part of things, and his fame kind of put a you know a wall between him and that, you know, which is why he liked coming down to down to bunkers and sitting in with us because he could just sit in the corner, you know, where almost nobody could see him, you know, and just play rhythm. He never wanted to solo. He never wanted to nothing. He didn't grab the microphone. He just wanted to funk a little bit, you know, get get you know have a funky good time. You know, and and yuck it up with me and Sonny a little bit, you know. So it, it, I think that was freeing for him to have that available to him because in most other situations, I'm sure people are too intimidated, or they imagine not in a million years would he, you know, want to, you know, just hang out and and jam. So, you know, I'm glad we at least provided a place for him to do that. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. How, what'd you no, want? No, no, no. I I was I was saying the the one time I met you, I don't know if I took, it was at the record signing, New York City. Greenwich Village. Okay. You guys were at Tower Records. You guys did that thing in New York City. Oh, boy. Yeah, with Maite and, um, you know, uh, Nona Gay and everything. Oh, so that was later on, like in 94, 95? Yeah, yeah. you guys did the Today Show, and then you head, head down there. And then you oh, that's right. Night. I remember that yeah. day. Did, yeah. We didn't perform at Tower, did we? No, no. It was just um, okay. signing and, you know. And, and I had the MPG, the first, the... The debut issue I had it signed on everybody's autograph on there. So, oh, all right, that's a treasured thing. Right on, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, you guys didn't do too many of those. No, we didn't. He didn't really enjoy it, and uh, yeah. So you know, and yeah. nobody would be, you know, very few people would be interested if if he didn't show up. So, <laughs> as I was walking in, somebody goes, "Hey, can you give this cassette tape to him?" I was like, "No." Oh uh, yeah, what? Are you kidding? Yeah, that, I mean, he would have just he would have handed it. He may have not picked it, picked it up, or he probably right, would have right. handed it to a security to get rid of it. Or yeah, exactly. you know what? Uh, but he might have listened too. You know, it's it's hard to say, man. I, yeah. We were in in the UK for uh, about a month when we were doing uh, the Gold Experience tour. We were staying at a hotel in London that was kind of our hub. Um, and Stevie Wonder was staying there with his band at the time. They were he was uh, doing a promotional tour for uh, what record would it have been? Maybe Conversation Peace or or uh, or the one after. I can't remember. But okay. so I you know I got to meet Nate Watts, you know, who played bass with Stevie longer than anybody. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we had lunch together and compared notes. Like, okay, what well, you know? I know Stevie has no conception of night or day. You know, does that mean that you guys have to record like, you know, you have to be available around the, yeah, around the clock. Not much different than you are, Brazil. I said, you're exactly right. You know, right, right. whenever Prince feels, you know, the, the, the whenever the mood hits him, we got to stop whatever we're doing and, and go. So, you know, we, you know, that was, that was a, 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 a good time with Nate. I, I, I got to hear his stories. He got to hear mine. And, uh, but what I was going to say was that, Terrence Trent Darby was staying at the same hotel. Oh, okay. and yeah. he was staying just a couple of uh, just a couple of uh, doors down from me. <laughs> and uh -huh. I was leaving my room one time, and he was standing out in the hallway with the hotel robe on and like the uh, the 
the the the hair cap, the shower cap, right? And and the um, and, and the the hotel slippers on, and uh, he was waiting for the masseuse to to come up. Okay. And I don't know if he wanted to like first, you know, he didn't want her just barging in. He, you know, I don't, I didn't really know him that well. Right. Uh, I I never got to, but um, uh, he he uh he's standing out there, and I'm like, oh hey Terrence, how's it going, man? And he recognized me from working with Prince, and I recognized him because he's Terrence Trent Darby. Uh, mm-hmm. And I said, what are you doing in town? Oh, I got this new record coming out. I'm, I'm doing a couple of shows. Uh, I think he was doing Top of the Pops, Tops of the Pops, or whatever it is. Right. Top of the Pops, I think it is. Top of the Pops, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, really? Oh, you got a record coming out? And he's like, yeah. He hold on, man. And he went in his room, and he came back out with a cassette. Uh-huh. Said, Here, here's a, you know, Here's a copy of it, you know. Uh, you know, I hope you like it. Said, well, I, I like all your records, man. So I imagine I will, you know. Wow. And uh, so I listened to it for a couple days, mm-hmm. and uh, I uh, I told Prince that he, uh, you know, that Terrence uh, gave me a copy of this new record. He's like, "Can I hear that?" <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> like, sure, I'll, I'll bring the cassette. And I I brought it and I, I gave it to him, and he he brought it back the next day. He's like. I don't hear no hits. He's like he he can still he can still blow though. He can still sing. Right, right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. All right. You know, so that's what Prince thought of vibrator. He didn't hear any hits. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, I it just jogged my memory that um two or three times Prince requested copies. This is before, you know, MP3s and you can load stuff on my radio show. So uh-huh. I sent him up uh, you know, up to Paisley Park like three cassette tapes of the show and whatever it was like print specials and i got an email back from paisley park and it just says i was listening to the show and the pitch on i think it was one of the camille songs like erotic city the voice was just a little off right and i'm listening on the playback i'm like off it doesn't sound anything like but he wrote the music so wow you know so yeah he you know what was your source what's that what what did you use to source the song? Was it um No like, no it was the actual it was the actual record, but I think the recording maybe in the cassette recorder in the studio at the radio station. Oh maybe it was running, been recording at a little off speed and he, he yeah. wrote back oh the pitch was a little off, you know? Yeah, okay. And I was like, Okay. And I asked the guy who was a guest on the show, did you think it was off? He goes, No. But well, he wouldn't listen, know. Prince, it was his music. I, I was I'll just say this. Because uh, a friend of mine uh, was texting me the other day. His name is Icky James. Icky James was texting me, okay. talking about, you know, he's like, why don't they just let Prince's music alone? Like, wh- every time I look up, some Huron is covering a Prince song. Prince didn't like for his music to be you know, uh, covered in the first place. He didn't care right. for that, you know. And not only that, and I, it, and I, and I texted him back saying, not only that, he went through uh, painstaking processes to make his music hard to cover. Like he would stack the keyboards in a certain kind of way. He would, you know, he would, you know, detune things. He would, you know, do things with tape that nobody was trying. Um, wow. You know, he would. I, I, it's you know, he would, he would hide things. You know, on Alphabet Alphabet Street. We didn't know until we opened the multi to get set to harvest samples one day. There's three bass tracks on it. Oh, wow. There's three basses going the whole time. And he's got it mixed in a way where it sounds continuous, like it's just one bass track. And it's like, it's very active. And, right, and yeah. there's a lot to play. It's like, who, anybody who's going to, they go certain intersections of that recording. It's like there's two different things happening on bass. And it's like, well, who's going to be able to do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's things pretty like slick that. to do that. Yeah, yeah. He stacked the, the 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 he did that his whole career. He stacked the OBE, the Oberheim patches, in a way that nobody could program. I mean, it's you know, <laughs> that's great. So he and, would, yeah, he would always cloak his music. He didn't want anybody touching his stuff. You know, mm-hmm. but uh. So it's it's funny because there's recently there's been a lot of like I, I think it was just on Facebook. A lot of people, some people we like, just you know, right, right. 
covering Prince, and it's just like, ah, let him live, or let him let him be at peace. Let yeah, just right. let him alone, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to be long gone, and you guys are going to be discussed with uh, with other generations. So, well, yeah, I mean, the, the music is yeah, it's definitely going to live on. Oh, you know, yeah. Thanks to people like uh, actually, I recently uh, had a Zoom call with uh, Mike Howe, who was oh okay uh, yeah He's yeah in charge of the stuff right yeah the, the, the man in charge yeah and he was no, asking, let, let's push on this you you have your own your own thing on YouTube right uh no, my own thing no you you do a podcast on YouTube sometimes right? I, I was for for a while but I, you know okay. it just uh I had to get back to what I know. I mean, we're living oh, okay. in, in trying and troubled times, uh, Joe Kelly. And, you know, I, I, I did what I could to try to, you know, uh, inform people, educate people right. a little bit. But, you know, it's, um, you know, we can sit back and talk about legislation and changing laws and making things more equal for everybody. Right. But um, uh, the, the reality is that you can't legislate uh you know, love or concern. You can't, you can't change a person's heart with legislation. The, the, the history of this country has proven that. I mean, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation may have legally stopped, <laughs> you know, slavery, but there were slaves still around in the year 1950. My grandfather was a slave. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you can, you can affect the system, you know, and I guess that's what the the whole discourse uh, gave me was that you know people have to make up their minds for themselves, and not only that, most of these issues are white people issues. It it ain't us. We didn't start yeah. it. We're not. We don't. We don't perpetuate it. So it's gonna take white people, you know, waking up white people yeah. before you know. Well, the real yeah, strides yeah. are going to happen, that's, that's and so that's true. just how I feel yeah. about it. You yeah. know, and I didn't mean to turn this into a little. No, no. Hey, I, I apologize. I cut you right off about your talk with Mike Howe. So uh, that's okay. We, I mean, we can wrap up on that. So sure. Okay. Well, yeah, Mike Howe. Um, and I had a delightful conversation with the dude, and he we talked for a minute about how, you know, it's like, it's a, there's so many hidden treasures, and how it just it keeps him up. He's saying it keeps him up at night. It's like just, you know, the things to do and the things, you know, how much unreleased material there really is. It's just, it's uh, it's inundated his his life. He's, it's, it's all he can focus on. <laughs> and I'm like, I understand because I know quite a bit of what, about what's in there, you know, and there are alternate versions of songs that have already been released, you know, there's covers. There's all sorts of stuff in that vault, you know, and um, uh, it's um, it was really interesting to talk to him about Prince's process and so on and so forth. I don't know if he's if he's going to ask me to be involved in the Diamonds and Pearls, you know, Redux or not. Um, there was some talk about it from a mutual friend at some point, but you know, I mean, I can take it or leave it, but I let him know that I was at his disposal. Oh yeah, you, know, you definitely, definitely for, should be there. You know, whatever advice or commentary or, you know, if he wants to know my opinion, I'm happy right. to give it. You know, especially, you know, if it means that, you know, Prince's, you know, his his uh, canon is uh, more perfected because of what I may have to say, you know, right. so it's, it's important that, this, yeah. that, that his music gets out and in the right way. So Michael has the, the biggest thing, what gets released or is it a joint committee? Uh, we didn't get that far. We really just talked about the psychosis oh, okay. that it's brought on. <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, and I, so I'm like, I feel for you, man. I mean, you need to talk about any of this, you know, you, you, you need me for something. Just, just call. So, right, right. you know, I mean, that's a daunting task. I wouldn't want to be in his position, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you just punch into the internet, you're going to hear yes, no, you're going to hear it, you know, everybody's yeah. got a, a view on things. Yeah, not yet. that's the other thing is to, to sustain the uh, the scrutiny, yeah, to, to deal with right. it. Yeah. 
So, um, hey, Michael, I got to thank you so much, Michael Bland, drummer for Soul Asylum, Prince of the New Power Generation, Shaka, Shaka Khan, of course, and uh, Madonna missed out and Guns N' Roses missed out, but you know, <laughs> you wish. No, go ahead. No, that's all right, man. No, it was cool. I'm, I had just, a, I'm just kidding around. I know, you know, listen, that, that Madonna situation, she was right. I didn't want to go out on tour playing a bunch of pads and, right, you know, right. In such a, it wasn't, it was not going to uh, enrich me in any other way except monetarily. And you know what? They right, ended right. up giving me a severance pass package, and I was fine with it. So she yeah, took I care of business. You say that. I, yeah. I got love from Madonna. She she did right, right by right. me. I'm cool. We're cool. Right. <laughs> so thanks, brother, for for always nice having you on the show. Yeah, man, it's been too long. Yeah. Let's do it again. Soon. I know we got to do this on the regular. You know, give me, give, give, I'm ready for the harder questions. We can delve deeper, Joe, really. I All wouldn't right. do that for, for with everybody, but I'll do it with right, you. Right. I'm, I'm going to, well, I'm going to do my homework and I'll come back with the grilling session for you. All right, bro. All right, brother. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, man. All right, brother. We'll talk right. to you soon. Thanks, All right. Michael. Okay, thank you.